I've been using GitHub for quite some time and along the way I've picked up some tricks and discovered some secrets to manage it better, push it to its limits and personalize my experience. I'm sharing some of my favorite today with you and I'm sure there's something new and helpful for you. Hi everybody and welcome back to Coder Dave. Today we talk about GitHub and how to use it better, smarter or at least more conveniently. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new videos. As I've mentioned in the intro, there are quite a few tips, tricks and secrets when it comes to using GitHubs and perhaps not all of those are known even to hardcore users or long-term users. Let's jump into them. I've created this repository in GitHub that contains all the examples I'm going to talk about here. So go and check this out. You will have the link in the video description so you can see by yourself the examples. And by the way, do you like this new GitHub UI? I'm not sure I totally like it. I think maybe I'm just used to the old one. I just would like the, the description to be on top uh, above the other content as it was before over here. So I can immediately know what is that I'm looking at. Anyway, let's talk about tips, tricks, and secrets. The first one is the fuzzy finder. Have you ever tried to look for a specific file or content inside a GitHub repo, maybe a big GitHub repo, and you just couldn't find it? I had, and it happens to me all the time. But this one is going to help you. To start using the fuzzy finder, just press T on your keyboard whenever you're in any repository page. As you can see, you can access it. And now if you start typing, let's say you want to search for license files. So I just type license. And as you can see here, just typing few layer, you'll have the finder filtering the file list for you. And now you can use the arrows to move between the results. For example, I want this file. I press enter and voila, super easy to find anything. So goodbye navigating through directories in a repo. Speaking of searching for files, let's go with tip number two, Octotree. This is the only one that I have in my list that actually requires something that is not yet integrated into GitHub. In fact, there is a great extension called Octotree, which allows you to browse for files and directory using a familiar tree structure. You can get the extension on octotree.io and I'm on Chrome right now, but you can use it also on Firefox, Opera and Safari. And it's also completely open source, so you can go and check the code by yourself to see what it does. After installing it in your browser, you'll have this box over here on the left. And when you click on it, it shows you a familiar tree-like structure for navigating your files and directory. For example, let's go to sources, uh, wwroot, and library, and so on and so forth. And I can go and click on a file, and when I do that, it opens the file in the normal GitHub window. And even better, let's suppose I'm already in some folder over here and some file, automatically it opens the folder structure for me. And I can also pin this here, so it's always open no matter what, and I can switch between files and folders very, very easily. And bonus point, it actually works also with GitHub Enterprise, so you have one extension and basically unlimited possibilities. They do also have some paid versions on the website, but the free one is the one I'm using and I'm recommending that because it's more than enough for what you would normally do. Next up, definitely not a secret, but for sure not very well documented or known. Let's talk about keywords for closing issues. As you probably know, when you commit your code, you can add a comment to actually automatically close an issue. And normally the most used one is fix hashtag and the number of the issue. Uh, for example, fix hashtag 12 to close the issue number 12. But actually, there are many other keywords you can use to achieve the same result. In the repo, I have this keyword markdown file. And if you open it, you can find all the supported keywords to close issues automatically in comments. As you can see, we have fix, fixes and fixed, close, closes and closed, resolve, resolves and resolved. These are the one I know and use, but if you know of any other keyword for this purpose, just please leave a comment below and let me know. Use any of those and the commit will close that issue automatically. And bonus tip, if you do this inside a PR, the issue is actually closed at merge time. All right, next one is the super linter. If you're not familiar with the linter concept, it's basically a validator that allows you to validate the syntax and the structure of some particular language. 
But what if you have many different language and syntaxes in your repository? Did you need to add a syntax checker and a linter for all of them? Well, so far, yes. But with the super linter, we actually solve this problem. To use the super linter, you just create uh, an action workflow and you add the super linter action that is by GitHub. There is a ton of customization with flags and templates that can help you customize the super linter to your individual repository. The one I want to talk about here is the one I've used, this validate old code base. In my case, I set it to false. If you set it to true, as the you know keywords say, it will run every time against every single file in your code base and in your repository. But if you set it to false, like I had, every time you commit something, that will run only against the files you just changed. So it will help saving a lot of time, especially if your repository is big. And as you can see here, I run it using the Docker keyword. So this will pull the image down from the Docker hub and run the GitHub super linter from there. You can instead use the normal one, not the Docker one, but that will build and compile the GitHub super linter at build time. And this can be far more costly uh, in time. And if we take a look at the official documentation, you will see that there is a lot of different languages that are supported for the linters, from infrastructure as code to HTML and CSS and all the major programming languages. So this is a pretty cool one. Before we move to the next one, hit the like button below if you think this video provides value to you or you find it helpful. Right, secret number five. Let's talk about links to code snippets. Well, this is actually not so much of a secret, but it's definitely not known by many people. You can actually link to a specific line in a code just clicking on the line number when viewing a file. Let's say I want to have a link to the row number 18 over here. I just click on it and as you can see here in the URL, the hashtag L18, so line 18, is added to the URL. And this link will always take you directly to that line. You can also link to a line number range by clicking on the first one and then holding down shift and select the last one. As you can see, the whole area became yellow. And again, if we take a look at the URL, I have the range over here. If the file you're linking is edited, deleted or renamed, of course, that link will not work anymore as you would expect. However, if you press Y on the keyboard or you click on the ellipsis here and you select copy permalink, you generate the canonical URL that will always work. And check this out because this is an added bonus. If you add the code snip permalink in a GitHub comment like here, this nice visualization of the code appears, so make it much, much easier to understand the piece of code you're referring to. Cool, right? Let's talk now about Markdown and its formatting. In fact, the GitHub flavored Markdown is pretty handy for basic formatting and basic tables, but sometimes you need to be quite creative to make it do whatever you want it to do. Actually, there are a few things you may not know about it. The first thing I want to talk about is the keyboard tags. You can use these KBD tags to make the text appear like a button, which is slightly different from the regular backtick text. And let's update this comment so you can see it in action. And it's perfect for documenting things like keyboard shortcuts or game controls in your readme and wikis and so on and so forth. Another cool thing is visualizing hex codes. As you can see here, you can place your hex colors in backticks. And what it does is rendering a tile next to the color with that color. This is quite cool. But let's see now some formatting that is both cool and pretty handy. You can visualize a diff using backticks and the diff keyword. And this highlights the lines in red or green based on the minus or plus at the beginning of the line. Let's see this in action. Here we go. As you can see, it has the formatting like in the pull request, for example. Last but not least about markdown formatting, did you know you can actually add some accordion-like button to your text to make it smaller and I have to say much cooler? Check this out. As you can see, here I have this long snippet in the comment. Let's make it prettier and more readable. Let's try to edit and add on top these lines. Details, a summary, and a print. Let's update this, and here it is. Now I can just click on the message I've written, and I have all my code over here. And this is pretty handy, because you can collapse it, and if you have a very, very long file or very big chunk of text, uh, this is hidden by this accordion. That was really cool, I love it. Next, let's talk about the URLs. Did you know you can get 
the user or organization avatar just invoking a URL? You can do that by just visiting this github.com slash username or organization names.png. This, for example, is mine. Cool, right? This is pretty useful, for example, when you're building website or content that actually relies on GitHub, for example, for authentication, and you want to see the user or the organization image. But that's not all. You can actually do something much more helpful. You can get diff or patch for a specific commit or pull request just using a URL as well. To get the diff for a commit or a PR, you use this syntax. GitHub.com slash owner slash repo slash either commit or pull with the show the commit and the ID of the pull request and then dot diff. And same thing for patch, which the only difference is that you have the patch keyword at the end. If you try one of those, this is the diff of that specific commit. And you can see over here that it also includes line removed and the lines added. Yeah, I know. All right, last one for today. This isn't a tip so much as a great feature, but since it's fairly new, I want to highlight it. If you go to your repository settings and you scroll down, you can enable these automatically delete add branches, which deletes the head branch of the pull requests that are merged. Unless you rely on log lib branches, and you definitely shouldn't, this is a very quick improvement. You can always restore the deleted branch so there is no risk. And I personally delete my branches just right after merging, so this is very helpful for me. Hit the like button below if you found this video helpful or you think it provided value to you. And consider subscribing if you aren't already. Thank you very much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this video and see you soon at Quarter Dave.